Hey there people of the internet, my name is Savannah and welcome to my studio. For this week's video I'm doing another Michigan Pokemon drawing and it's more bugs because I need more bugs in my life. I love bugs, they're so cute and small and I like small things. I will be doing more D&D drawings along with my Michigan Pokemon. They're going to be like my two main series that I do on this channel. So yeah, now let's just get into the drawing. So here we have some gypsy moths because they're all over Michigan and I guess these would kind of be like your Caterpie, the three stage early early game bug that you catch and it evolves really quickly. But these are not the first bugs you will encounter. I'm saving that spot for Smallisk and its evolutions because I said so, because I love Smallisk and snails and I like to switch up the formula. This is Instava, a combination of Instar and Larva. I was gonna call it Instarva, but that kind of sounds like it's starving and it's just weird. Instar is the phase between two periods of molting in the development of insect larvae, and it's based on gypsy moth caterpillars, which have these like blue and red little spots, so it's gonna have blue and red spots, and they're kind of fuzzy, so he has this big poofy collar, which I keep in the rest of the line, as you can see. And gypsy moth caterpillars literally rain from the trees in the spring, more on that later. And then Tweepe, the pupae Pokemon, based on the gypsy moth cocoons, and they like to leave them on twigs in tree branches, so twig, pupae, Tweepe. I kept the fluff from Instava because otherwise it would kind of just look like how the cocoons look, which they kind of look like a, like a poop, and I don't like that, so I made it cute and gave it a little sleepy face. And finally, Gypsimotia, whose name I changed at least three times. I wanted Gypsy in the name somehow and combined it with its scientific name, Limantria Dispar, but made it Motia instead of Mantria, to kind of put moth in there too. Gypsimotia is also bug and psychic type, mostly just because I wanted that typing, but also because of the association with gypsies and magic and fortune telling. And what better way to make it look like a psychic type than to give it giant, all-seeing eyes and some random ass jewels all over its body. I am really happy with this design though, I love moths, I think they're very very cute even if they are kind of annoying by being literally everywhere. I wasn't joking about them raining caterpillars in the spring. Michigan has a lot of trees and they lay their eggs up there so caterpillars just start falling from the sky and then they go back up to eat the leaves and then fall down again because I don't know they're dumb. They literally get everywhere and it's pretty obnoxious but I love them and I'm going to add that into their lore because it's fun. I've also recently learned that gypsy moths are an invasive and disruptive species because the caterpillars can defoliate, weaken, and kill over 300 different species of trees and shrubs. Since 1970, more than 83 million acres have been defoliated by the gypsy moths in the US. And defoliate means to remove the leaves, which can cause a lot of problems for the plants themselves. So not only are they annoying, they're actually pretty bad for the ecosystem. But one potential benefit that they could have is being able to remove any problematic plant species in an area. It's not the biggest benefit and definitely doesn't outweigh its huge detriment to the environment, but hey, at least we have spiders to eat them. Be nice to your spiders, everyone. They're nature's little custodians. I chose these colors simply because these are the colors of gypsy moths and their caterpillars. I kept the red and blue from Instava and made the, gyp the jewels on Gypsimotia red and blue to translate that continual growth, like with the fluffy collar, and the shinies I just kind of invert them, or rather switch them up, so the blue will now be red and the red will now be blue. And then shiny Gypsimotia will be a white or a gray, uh, like how some gypsy moths are white and gray instead of this like pretty kind of dusty brown. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. Oh yeah, I've recently been working on a Pokedex layout for all of my Minichimon, which will have all of their info on it, like height, weight, a size comparison to me, which you can find over at my $3 tier on Patreon, as well as their types, stats, abilities, shiny forms and evolution lines, of course, but I'm also going to be writing up dex entries for all of them. My goal when I do eventually finish the region is to make a Pokedex book, so I'll probably be posting these pages on my Patreon soon, and we'll eventually have to figure out pricing and stuff, but I want to make it over on Kickstarter. This won't be for a while though, I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up. And in other news, I have an announcement about the Nightmare Game comic. It's not really happening. <laughs> At least not anytime soon. It's kind of too hard for me right now, so I'm just going to be focusing on the Minichi region. I will still make art for it and have another update about it coming in the next Nightmare Game video, I just wanted to let you guys know before then. 
It's just, it's too much for me at the moment. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my moths and liked learning about their role in the ecosystem. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you haven't already. Consider joining my Patreon or following me on Instagram or checking out my Etsy store. Whatever you feel like, you know? And as always, take care and I'll see you in the next one.